I was doing uh, Mohanlal <coughs> Baros. That's the first film he's doing and the only film he said he'd do. So I had to let go of PS1. Every time you go to do a film, it's a different experience. And I believe that a cinematographer is like a tree, you know. Uh, you have to grow both sides. You have to have the roots as well as reach into the skies, you know. Thank you. Great honor and privilege to be talking to you, uh, Santosh. And uh, to start off, you know, uh, I uh, heard Anil say that it's it's a great award to cap a career like yours. You. Uh, I would want to know from you about you know, so many awards, so many recognitions, so many laurels. What makes this award so special? I think uh, it's a very special award, actually. And I think it's a coincidence too, because ever since I started my career, I've been using engineer lenses. The engineer zoom is very much in use even now. I use the same lenses actually. So it gave us a big surprise to me that this award is given by them. So I think um, that was the first emotional factor, which was I won't do all these things. I won't do all these things. And uh, old lenses, of course, but uh, they have been uh, very much attached to my career. Yeah. Uh, talking of awards, otherwise, uh, for someone who's such a legend as you, uh, what do awards mean? I mean, are they necessary to keep fueling your creativity, fueling your artistry? Uh, uh, what is it about awards that seems uh, to you as a, as, a, as a cinematographer, as a filmmaker? When I first got my first national award, it was to testify my mother, who <laughs> thought I was only doing it for only doing action films. So I did a film, and I told her that I'm going to get an award for this. So that was my first uh, national award. But by the time I came to the 11th, then she was not <coughs> I just didn't know. Uh, but I think awards are good in the way that they give you a certain power, and also especially this award. After I got this award, I have had so many young people message me. And saying how inspiring it is for them that they could also think of breaking barriers and getting out into the international scene. The same kind of uh, uh, interest uh, they had when I got, I was invited by the American Society of Cinema because they thought that these were not very easy for Indians to claim to, you know. But I think uh, if you have worked with, I always felt that uh, cinematography is a visual language and visual language has no barriers, no boundaries. You could always travel the world, meet different kinds of people, then invite different kinds of locations, and just showcase your work and you know, it be always, uh, in this profession is so beautiful that uh, one lifetime is not enough to complete all your talents and meetings so you You mentioned young filmmakers and I was struck by the fact that this year in Canada, we have three films from FTII graduates. Yeah. Uh, you know, one in Acid, one is obviously in the competition, Fire's film. We have one in the Lassinef uh, short film. And then you are here. And then I was struck again by Anil talking about, you know, the days when you used to be loud and hear a certain kind of music in FTI. Yeah. So tell us something about those years, you know. Uh, personally, how they molded you? Professionally, how they molded you? FTI is a beautiful place, actually. It is, uh, uh, it's uh, only two... Uh, Institutions in India are actually really at a national level. Both are run by government. Uh, one is the FTI in Pune and one is FTI. Because these actually um, uh, actually attract people from all over India, and they are all belong to different social status, which is very important. It can't be because today it is expensive to study photography and filmmaking in India if you are going to private institutions. And most of the private institutions, they only cater to local talent. So if you're an institute in Tamil Nadu, they attract Tamil people. So the only national institute are the two supported by government of India. They are doing a great job, I think. And see, <coughs> such a result, obviously, uh, you have to say that everyone is taking a great interest in that. And I'm very proud as a film institute person, as so many students are here. And I've been so many of these two people here. Yeah. And was it fun as well? 
uh, have those bonds and friendships stay over the years? Yeah, because you know you have lots of uh, film institute students who at home they think that they are a little different, strange. In the school I studied in, uh, I have out of 50 people, 32 of them are doctors and engineers and all that. I'm the only one, odd one out actually, wanting to pursue the artistic career. So you're always the one out. And when you come to the institute, you feel that you're mm -hmm. at home. Mm -hmm. All of them are very much fond of the same things. So you see films internationally, you have discussions about them. So your people, you interact with them. And people carry on different messages after seeing a film. So when you share it, you realize that uh, you learn so much more. Which is very important because that is how you see the world and so uh, you also want to exhibit some that kind of uh, interest to uh, showcase to the rest of the world. So you make films like that. Even though I work in uh, Bollywood and all the big commercial films, I was also made a lot of films which are very festival friendly. Like The Terrorist I did, which was the first one in Sundance. So, uh, and the film with John Malkovich actually presented the whole world over. So I think it's very interesting to see a small film with a little budget being seen by an audience in America. You know, I think cinema is truly is universal. So that way when I see our films being exhibited here, I really feel good. Yeah. Uh, which will lead into my next question. Uh, you know, eclectic set of films, eclectic set of filmmakers. Uh, I would want to know from you that as a cinematographer, when you say yes to a project, or you say no to a project, what is it that guides you in, in kind of choosing what you ought to do? Actually, it depends on uh, different people, no? <coughs> uh, some of them are friends, so you have worked with them, and you know their interest, so you might not even read the script. You might say, okay, let's go ahead. Uh, sometimes if you want to make a small film, and you're short of money, I might sign a very big film to make the money, and then produce it on my own. And sometimes uh, it are people who you truly admire, like Emma Fussain, who's a painter. He might not be a filmmaker, but then you think you learn something from him. You learn from everyone, actually. So I want to understand his vision. So I've done films like that with him. So sometimes I think they you know documentaries because the person who's doing them is so passionate about it. So I think basically if the people you are going to work with have a passion and have a drive which you think that you would like to get into and learn something. But then some associations are like iconic in a way. Uh, with Mani Ratnam for that matter. Uh, would you be ever able to say or would you, or have you said no to him? Uh, uh, you know, what is it about the two of you which has created such a range of uh, fantastic movies and fantastic <laughs> movies? No, actually I've said no to him. So okay. <laughs> Basically, I believe that you should work with the same director two films, then give it a break before it throws you out. Uh, so you give it a break. So I only work two films at a time, then I always take a break so that we just can breathe. And sometimes uh, I was doing uh, Mohanlal Baros. That's the first film he's doing and the only film he said he'd do. So I had to let go of PS1 because Mohanlal said, it's the only film I'm doing, you've already done six hours films with him. So it becomes, uh, you have to take a, make a choice. So that, that film is over. So sometimes it happens, but we understand each other. And also, whenever we join together, it has to be something special. Out of so many associations, everyone is expecting you to be something special also. Otherwise, with the people, they just, on Twitter, they go all over, you know. Uh, coming back to Mani Ratnam, and a question I think you would have been asked several times because in popular imagination, it's a big, big moment, which is the train sequence. You know, uh -huh. jaya jaya. Tell us a bit about how it was all done. How did it come together the way it has? Actually, we tried shooting on top of a train, a portion of the song in Irwad with Mohanlal. And then we decided that it was very difficult to dance on top and all that. Having most of the time when you do some want to do something, we both ask each other question: Why you want to do this? What and how? When and how is different? But why is very important? So me and Mani must have traveled to most of the northern train journeys. Uh, wondering if this would be suitable. 
then we decided that why we are doing it is because we should create in the audience a feeling of a childhood wonder and nostalgia. Then we decided that without the tunnel, we cannot ever catch up. We create the nostalgia of the first straight jump. So we want a tunnel. So that is how we zeroed in onto Uti, which is a slower train, but we could make it look appear faster. And uh, we had not we had time, we only shot the song in two days actually. Uh, because there's no way how people can get going from. No, there's no way you can get away from it. You have to just keep shooting. So we shot like that. We didn't have lights, much lights. This is a train and things. So it's very simplified and the shower would always help. So as much as I can see the camera is shaking too much. You know, because everyone was scared. Because you can actually see the camera shake, but then when the camera is uh, attached to the train, along it's shaking along with the person. So you can't make out much. That you are aware because we have done so much of big shots and things. So there's a, technology is technology is also there, but not so much as the passion and the artistic uh, energy attribute. You mentioned Hussein, you know, he, he being an artist. And somewhere, I think, a, you know, a cinematographer is also an artist, is, is also a painter. It's just that your medium is different. You're using a lens to kind of paint something, you know, a kind of bring alive a landscape or a face as an artist is doing. I wanted to know a bit more about the synergy <coughs> of that association, you know. When a, a artist, a painter works with a cinematographer, uh, how does it come together? Actually, uh, it was very dif difficult because he would not come on set and all that. Uh, he would tell in the morning that this is how it just happened in my life. This is how it is. So I will look at so many, four pages of dialogues. Then he'll take the four pages of dialogues up and says, okay, no dialogues for you. So he was a very difficult person to handle. But then he'll tell me what all colors is be there. And they just in Prague, he has been, he lived there. So he knows all the nook and corner. But it was, uh, he had a free, we had a free hand. But at the same time, he would say uh, and paint what he would like to have. So I think it's a different experience. But what I like about cinematography is that every time you go to do a film, it's a different experience. And I believe that a cinematographer is like a tree, you know. Uh, you have to grow both sides. You have to have the roots as well as reach into the skies, you know. So you have to have your technological thing right, your relation with your people, with your culture, all going down. So you have to have uh, growth on both sides. Otherwise it doesn't really work. Okay. Another interesting film uh, for me, Vana uh, 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 you know, which was here in Cannes, uh, and it has been directed by Shadi Karun, who's also a cinematographer. Uh, how is that experience like? You know, when you work with a filmmaker who is a cinematographer himself, is there any interference in terms of the vision? <laughs> uh, you know, how he you know, he or she would kind of conceptualize a scene when you work with a cinematographer turned filmmaker? Not really, because he understands me pretty well. In fact, uh, uh, Mohila, the actor, only asked me to shoot the film. Because uh, <coughs> Shaji Ayatan had a lot of assistance. So, but he wouldn't touch anyone with the film. And he didn't know me personally that time. So, we asked the actor. And then, it, because it was started off by a uh, French duke, so it, it, everyone, everyone was very hesitant to take it up as a challenge, you know, because they'd be compared and all that. So I said, you show me the Russians and I'll see what I can do. And uh, the French people also, that particular cameraman was very slow. And Kathagali is an art form which is, takes a big toll on the actors, because you have been dressed up for 12 hours, you can't even go to a restroom like that. You have to stuff like that. And so it becomes very difficult. You have to be a quick, quick to achieve it. So all that is happening. And Mohalla is not the, he's only acting as a actor. So he was very problem. So they had stopped the shooting after one year. So then later when I came back after a year to shoot the film, uh, he literally, he led me into everything because I used to uh, speed it up. Because most of the actors were all otherly actors. I had a lot of respect for them, I understand their mistake. So I knew that we had to go with the flow and not make them into uh, work like actors. From cinematography to filmmaking for yourself, I mean, uh, was it a you know, kind of natural, organic transition for you? And again, when you work on your films, 
you've always been the cinematographer yourself. Uh, you never thought of having someone else come on board? No, actually, uh, most of the people when I shoot a film, I direct a film, they'll be very upset that as if I don't shoot the film. Like, they leave it out and not uh, So I think, uh, and also, if you're a writer, then you will write your own film. So if I am a cinematographer and that's one of the best things I can offer, I would definitely would like to shoot my own film. The provision was not uh, like that. I actually uh, never assisted anyone as a cinematographer. I actually thought I was a genius after I came on the beach too. Yeah. Most of these people after the institute, film institute, you know, they think that. Uh, so, I didn't assist anyone. So, I had no way of making a living. So, I used to take up classes. Uh, now, I used to teach in the Titan Center for the day. Because I also learned film photography and I could make prints and all that. So they left me, uh, so I used to do it for Vivek and the Kendra and Christian missionaries. They would send me places where they would shoot some people having food, kids having food, and they'll get some funding from Tata and all that stuff. So one of them asked me, the Vivek and the Kendra people asked me whether I would like to go and teach uh, photography in Arunachal Pradesh. So that time I thought some 35 years back, I thought Arunachal Pradesh must be next to Andhra Pradesh. I said, okay, I'll go. And then I found after nine, day, nine days of travel, landing up in the midst of China border with a huge forest all around. And in front of uh, the school, small school, some two acres of the school, all the tribal children have swords. And, you know, they're a little short and pink and tough looking people. And in front, greeting us was Mahatma Gandhi's statue. He was also made like that, okay, tough. Legs are all like muscular, shoulders muscular, and the stick was raised as if to hit people. So I said, Mahatma Gandhi was not like this. <coughs> then they said, No, no, he was like that. He chased the British people away, so he had to raise the stick. So that kind of people, that's very funny actually. But the children were very interesting. So when the dog died, I went with them to bury the dog. And they took him to the forest. And they started digging so deep into the under under a tall tree. They waited till they found the rope. That is six feet down. Then they buried the dog. Then they said, only now the dog will become the flower. So they believe. And then later on, from their elders, I realized, they, they believe that anything with life has to have a mystery. And the mystery will always have, like in people, a dark side and a bright side. So, and anything that grows will go down and up. Otherwise, there's no growth. So, I learned all that, which I put into my work. So, I find when I shoot something, I will always see whether there is an element of darkness and light. Is there mystery in this image? So, that is how I do my work. I don't get too much inspired by seeing references and all that. I try to see if it fulfills all this. And a cinematographer's life is always over the edge because always they will tell very difficult things and not have enough things to do. So these people taught me how to handle that also. After the burial was happening and it became dark, we are going out and suddenly one of them pulls out the sword and looks at me and says, whispers something. Then he says, there are two tiger prints, fresh tiger prints. It's all tall grass, not beautiful trees with stuff. Or tall grass, so the tiger would be sitting somewhere and saying, good South Indian dinner coming up, or something, <laughs> or something like that. That time it was really, so I asked him very frantically, I was a teacher, so I can't simply be scared or something. They, I told them, what do you do if you see a tiger? They said, we run very fast through tall tree, tall grass and climb the tall tree very fast. So I said, but uh, oh, I don't know how to run like the people or climb a tall tree like this. What do I do? Then he looked at me and said, no problem, sir. You see tiger, you will learn everything very fast. <laughs> just have to learn. You just have to believe in yourself. So I think, you know, sometimes that if everyone thought like that in real life and not postpone it for the next day, and if you feel you have a tiger behind you, then you will be amazing to see how people will believe. Most cinematographers suddenly are in that position. Where they have to do it, do something so fast, and they somehow manage to do it. It's because that tiger is there. 
Uh, you know, one of us, then you at that time you couldn't come to camp, right? And this is the first time. So tell me, as a cinematographer, how will you frame camp? How does it look to you? What is it that strikes you the most about it? Oh, I, I like the scene. Uh, I've been already doing interviews. Okay. So I've been already doing interviews, but I actually <coughs> like the whole bus about it. I like this festival actually, it's very interesting. I've been to a lot of festivals. Uh, I've met all these can people uh, who are big people here uh, during the Busan festival. Oh, I, I was the jury in the Busan festival with Anna Karina, who was a big Deva influence. So all these people here were like lambs trying to get picture taken with her. So I remember that. And she used to tell me about uh, can and say, you know, okay. But I always got a lot of information from her. And she was a very funny person. She said, Gwadad used to make such films. It was so very quick, not jump cuts, that he even named his dog come here. So that he doesn't have to let his dog come here. So there's a lot of stories like that. She's a very interesting person and he also always has things to do. So that is my first impression of class from what she called. But it does kind of intrigue the artist in you, right? Yeah, it's interesting because I feel no. Uh, somewhere, uh, I've not been able to see any films. Uh, actually, I've been only doing interviews. So. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, to round it off, uh, uh, something about the new film that you're doing, uh, Zuni, it's like, yeah. right? Uh, something about. Yeah, Zuni is a film that I'm making in Kashmir uh, uh, on Habakkuk, the Great Witch. I want to do that film for a long time. So I have, uh, I have a girl called Shaili Kishan who is acting in it. They are the ones who music. I am planning to cast people like uh, Vijay Sirbudi and Nava uh, Sirbudi and we make it cameos in Shalom and all that. I have not asked them yet to name the asking them. But as soon as uh, they are the one who gives me music, I will start shooting. I have shot about 15 to 20 percent of the Chinese versions. So lovely for you to join us, Sandeep. Thank you. Uh, and uh, thank you. Good evening. An immediate question which comes to my mind is uh, the collaboration with Santosh. Uh, when did you meet him? You know, uh, what what was it like, kind of working with him? Some memories that you can share with us. Um, there's a gun behind me, yeah. <laughs> Santosh <Sivan. laughs> No, but uh, I have, of course, the legend of Santosh Sivan. Uh, I have uh, grown up watching a lot of his work um, and admired it and wished and hoped. Um, and uh, I was so excited. So I did Kacha Veli Day with Manisa. And uh, soon after that, he was making this other film. And I actually wasn't supposed to be a part of it. <laughs> and then last minute, I was told that, like, whatever, there was some change in... Uh, Plan and last minute I was told that I was going to do it and I was very excited because then it meant that I was getting to spend two years at Madras Talkies uh, around uh, Manisa, who, because of whom I became an actor. So I was so excited and then I got to know that Santos sir was going to shoot it. Uh, and it was really, really, really exciting because it's really like, you know, living out your dreams and to be shot by him and we shot a lot in natural light. Uh, no, but that was really exciting. Uh, and uh, just to be in front of his camera and to be filmed by him. And I think Manisa and him uh, and Santosa also have this lovely working, uh, you know, relationship. And it was just wonderful being on set. And I remember when I was shooting CCV, I would never leave set. I would always be on set. Either I was helping with artwork or, or I was helping somebody for, or I was following him around or I was like following Manisa around. So it was just really exciting for me because I was like working with a lot of these legendary humans. So it was great. You know, because as an actor, there has to be a lot of trust when it comes to the cinematographer in particular, right? Uh, one, one, you know, spectacular quality about it that you want to talk about, uh, something which is very distinct about it. Um, so, I mean, if I were to start by saying that for me, I, I've been lucky because I've worked with really, really incredible people and trust comes naturally and surrender is the most obvious thing to me. Uh, and I know no other way. And uh, also with uh, Santosh sir, the, I think it's just how he uses, at least in CCV, it was the whole thing of natural light and how something can change in a second 
with the magic of how the sun is kind of filling the room or where he places you or how that scene is blocked by Manisa or how, you know, the entire blocking of the scene sometimes done in one shot. Um, and I have some photographs of that time which he has taken, which he has sent me, which are just incredible. And he sees things that we don't see, right? And that's what you're seeing in that film. So um, I think, I mean, it, it, I honestly feel I should not be speaking about him. <laughs> it's not, uh, it's too difficult for me to say it. But I can only say as a student and a, and a fan of his and a lover of cinema that it, it, it's really thrilling to be framed by somebody like him and to be shot by him. Santosh, you have to tell us something about Aditi. You know, I mean, you've worked with all kinds of stars. So uh, what's, what's, what has been lovely about framing her as she says? No, I think uh, when Mani Ratnam told me that she's he's, he's planning to repeat her for this film, and uh, then after I started shooting, I realized why. Right. And recently, I saw a very good uh, series with her in it, Hira Mudi, and I uh, messaged uh, Sanjay saying that it's a lovely vision and very nice casting. And <coughs> it was very happy actually. Uh, so I think you know there is something definitely special. About uh, which uh, I think most actors I have <coughs> shot, whether it's yeah. Shahrukh or Amir or anyone, they all have that extra radiance, which comes into the, uh, you know, it starts to radiate around when they come on set, especially when they enact something. So obviously you look at any actor who comes in to see if they have that special radiance. And then you realize that they have them. So she's one of those lucky ones, yeah. So uh, her radiance and your lens creating magic. Why? I think you know. I am uh, a Sikhoda Dev is just like someone's best friend. I've shot most of my films on heroines without makeup, whether I did with Karina in Ashoka or Madhu in Roja or Manisha in uh, Manisha Karada in Dilse. We have done without makeup. So, but the actor on the other side will look at you like a best friend. When you go to meet your best friend, you don't necessarily have to comb your hair and look good. They, they know that you accept it. Yeah. So I feel when you, if you get the confidence of the actor that the person behind the camera is like your best friend, then they come very free. <laughs> Ajod is a very good example when I shot the uh, uh, Kuchu in Scotland. She was also like that. She used to come. And they used to, because when you're without makeup and you have to also do things to make them look good. First of all, they have to make sure they sleep well. Secondly, you have to make sure that you have big black cloth all around. <laughs> so then they can open their eyes. <coughs> Not squeeze them there. Right. So you have to be helpful. So then they appear more real. The people heavily made up, if they do a crying scene, this is what they do. So all the reasons that we try to get rid of makeup. You prefer shooting without makeup? It depends on them. If you shoot too much of uh, sunlight, then it's better to have a little pan on them so that after the fourth day, they won't go dark. But if you are well shaded and all that, I, I think most people, they look, see, Everyone is looking for perfection, but the fact is that everything beautiful is imperfect. You know? And uh, sometimes they might have a not such a great smile, but that smile is what is interesting. Actually, I shot a film called Perindachan, for which I got a national award. Uh, so the Perindachan, the story of Perindachan is about a master craftsman, superior folk team, who used to make gods and goddesses for his temples. And he used to do everything very perfectly. Then his son started making gods and goddesses imperfectly with a crooked nose like that. And everyone started liking those. So he was very jealous. So he ends up killing the son. So the story of Perindachan resonates a fact that nothing else could be perfect. Everything has to have that imperfection. So it's like, you know, when you point the finger at the moon and says, look at the moon. Why do you want to look at the finger? That's, it's like, what camera did you shoot that with? That is looking at the finger, not at the moon. Yeah. So you have to look at the moon. 
Uh, we'll have to bring the session to a close. Yeah. The last bit that I wanted to know for you. Uh, you know, we talk about the democratization of the medium, right? We talk about how technology is becoming accessible to everyone. All of us are similar to that also. Yeah. We have stuff on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. But what makes a cinematographer different <coughs> from a cinematographer? <laughs> Actually, I love the idea that people now use phones to take pictures and to do videos. Because see, today's, uh, in today's generation, the children actually learn how to take pictures before learning to read and write, you know? So, in, the, my, in my childhood, I used to learn how to sketch. And uh, but sketching is a very interesting point, because if you sketch, you have to observe it. So you learn observing. I still sketch a lot, you know? So I think that is something is amazing. And that should not be taken away from the curriculum for sure. But nowadays people are taking pictures and everyone takes pictures. But then just like when people uh, uh, learn how to read and write, they're only messaging. They don't become writers like you. Huh? They're only messaging. So they cannot stop at this if they have to continue. They have to grow much more. You know? But it is good that they're doing this because they will understand your work much better because they know the basics. So they will actually upload and understand <coughs> your work much better. I think cinematography actually is like, a, uh, I treat it like music, you know? it should be like music. So the melody is written by light and shade and the rhythm is created by uh, compositions and camera movement. So if both are together and blend then you have something exciting. So that is how when I approach a scene or a shot, I think like this. Whether it has music in visual terms. That's such a lovely way of putting it. It's been such a privilege to have spoken to you today. Aditi, thank you so much to add to the yeah. you know the conversation here.